going to do the second part of the circulatory system. <clears throat> this is the blood vessels. All right. Arteries are blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart. Uh, the largest ones are called conducting arteries. Then you get down, they'll branch and become distributing arteries. And then you'll get down to where you're almost to, you're down to the organs themselves. And um, we call these the resistance arteries because they're getting smaller and smaller and you, that's going to help us keep pressure onto it. Hmm. Now coming back to the heart, we call them veins. So we're going to start off with our post-capillary veins. This is after they leave the capillaries. These are really tiny. Then you get your muscular venules are a little bit longer, uh, larger, and they're, they start collecting more of them. And then you get to your medium and your large ones. And these have valves to keep blood from flowing back because veins are, uh, a, 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 there's no blood pressure in the uh, veins. All your blood uh, pressure is in your heart. So like if you were to hold your wrist like that, and you feel the, your, the heartbeat in your wrist, that is occurring in the arteries, not the veins. You don't feel that, that pulsing sensation in the veins because it's a zero pressure system. It's a low pressure system. <clears throat> And at the organs themselves, you have what we call capillaries. Uh, again, these are my, these get actually down small enough so that only one blood vessel can, one blood cell can pass through at a time. And this is where a gas exchange occurs. These are where the walls are thin enough that the oxygen can diffuse across, carbon dioxide can diffuse across, uh, nutrients and waste products can diffuse across, and they pick them up uh, and then it would, uh, they drop off the oxygen and nutrients and pick up carbon dioxide and waste products and carry it back to the heart or wherever it needs to go. And the, the anatomy of a blood vessel itself. The inside of it is called the tunica interna. Um, this is uh, it's an endothelial layer. It's just a uh, thin membrane layer on the inside. It's nice and smooth so that way blood can flow through it. Because anytime you get uh, a rough surface, you can get clots forming there. So it wants to be nice and smooth, low friction. Uh, then you have uh, a layer outside of it called the tunica media. This is where your uh, the smooth muscles are in the blood vessels. This is what will cause them to squeeze off, um, to restrict blood flow or to open up to increase blood flow. Uh, examples of this is if you wear rings, in the, in the winter time, your rings feel loose on your fingers because those blood vessels have constricted off. There's not as much blood going to your fingers where your fingers get cold in the winter time. Vice versa, in the summertime, when it's trying to get rid of some excess heat, they'll dilate and, and um, the swell in the rings will be tighter on your fingers. <clears throat> and then on the outside of this is the tunica, uh, excuse me, the tunica externa. This um, was going to be holding, this, it's going to merge with uh, the surrounding tissue to hold it in place. The um, important part of this is that this has the vasovasorum. And the vasovasorum is where the blood vessels are that actually feed this tissue. Because all the blood on the inside of the tunica interna is going someplace else. So the blood, the and since this isn't their blood vessels are organs, they have to have some uh, a blood supply also, and that's where the base of the storm comes in. And so if you look over here, the lumen, the inside of any kind of a hollow tube, or any tube is a hollow, uh, it's called the lumen. You have that thin layer on the inside, let me show it right up here. <clears throat> that's your tunica interna, that's the inside of it. Then you have the muscular portion on uh, surrounding that, your tunica media. And then the outside portion, the tunica externa, and you see all the blood vessels and nerves and stuff to control that regulate stuff is in that um, uh, region of the blood vessel. Again, this is an artery. Notice that the uh, muscle, the smooth muscle in an artery is much thicker than the smooth muscle in, a, um, in the vein. And that's just because of, uh, it's 
arteries are much thicker anyway because they have there's a lot of pressure in them from the heart. The veins do not have that as much. Now remember we talked about some valves right here. So the blood is flowing back to the heart going this direction and it'll pass through a valve but it can't fall back down. Now how does it do that? Muscle contraction, walking around, moving, that helps squeeze these blood vessels and pumps the blood through it. And those valves keep it from just going the wrong direction. Remember, they are on a blood, uh, excuse me, veins are on a, uh, do not have pressure in them, unlike arteries that the blood is being pumped through them from the heart because it loses all that speed right here in the capillaries because these are one cell thick going through there. All right, some types of capillaries. <clears throat> um, we got your, uh, the most common ones everywhere. These are continuous. These have some small gaps in them uh, between the cells uh, to let a little bit of diffusion. And there's not, or not a lot. Uh, the second type would be a, a fenestrated capillary. And you find these in certain organs that uh, need more flow, more exchange. Uh, mainly the kidneys, your uh, small intestines, and things like that. But again, these kind of contain, these have holes in them. All right, oops, let me back up. They have holes in them which allow molecules to pass more freely. And then we have our last ones here, they're called the sinusoid capillaries. Uh, you find these in, I say liver, they're meant kidney if I did, if I said, I don't know. Uh, you find these in the liver, which have wide gaps because we have a lot of blood exchange. There's a lot of exchange going on on these. So if we show the pictures, of, um, you can see there's just tiny gaps in the between the cells, the mem basement membrane of the uh, blood vessels, and that lets plasma through. And that's good um, because blood, again, blood does not leave to uh, the organs. It's uh, the plasma that's leaving, and that's how it's carrying things to and from them. Uh, uh, tissues, you get a little bit of a, a circulation up through these spaces. On the fenestrated, you've got some more holes. It looks a little, a little bit of a Swiss cheesy type of a look. And to and certain organs have this again to allow more uh, passage of, of fluids. Um, then, like the liver is one of the most uh, it has many, many, many functions. Uh, so it needs a lot of uh, pat exchange. <clears throat> so they have huge holes in it. Uh, but again, notice these holes are still all smaller than the white blood cell, excuse me, the red blood cells. So the blood cells themselves do not leave the capillaries. All right, uh, they're getting arranged. You know, we have uh, 10 to 100 of them uh, for a single area. Uh, these are controlled by blood flow through capillaries. This uh, is regulated by the sphincters, muscular sphincters. Sphincters are just the uh, muscles that will squeeze off regions on it. Uh, so that way it can direct how it wants the blood to flow through the capillary beds. And there is one main system through it, and that's called the thoroughfare. All right, that's, uh, let me get a pointer before you see this. Uh, your thoroughfare, and that's going to be like the main passageway through a uh, capillary bed, <clears throat> and that's when the blood is, uh, so blood will always flow through that, and when it's closed off from the rest of them. So if we look, right here is the thoroughfare, all right, and you see sphincters in these regions here, uh, so this, on uh, this particular, the, the superior version here, the upper picture, the, the capillary bed is open, so you got lots of blood flow going to that organ, that tissue system. And this bottom one, the sphincters are closed, so it can only pass through the uh, thoroughfare, and the tissue is not being fed a, um, a large blood supply. Uh, usually, when this happens, it's, it depends, it can happen for various reasons. We see it in our fingers or our lips, they turn blue. But that's usually because of a coldness or, you know, could be anemia, something along, along that line. They can be closed off for various reasons. But those are just a couple of examples.
no matter where is our blood located, by far the majority of our blood is right here in our veins, right? Got a little bit in our capillaries, a little bit in the heart, a little bit in the pulmonary system, a little bit in the arteries, but most of our blood is sitting in our veins. <clears throat> All right, some of the major uh, arteries that you should familiarize yourself with, uh, the internal and external carotid, uh, up here, you got your main carotid and the, uh, the internal and external. Um, you need your aortic arch coming off the heart. You'll have a brachiocephalic going up. That's the one that's feeding up to the brain and the arms. You'll have a, uh, there's a third one over here, and that's the left, left subclavian artery. And those are coming again over by the cl uh, clavicle. You're descending. Uh, well, you have your coronary arteries, one's feeding the heart itself. <clears throat> and if we stick in the arm, you'll have your axillary, which is in your armpit, and you have your the brachial, you'll have your radial and your ulnar, and the forearm and the hand, or excuse me, forearm antebrachium. The uh, aorta has it comes down, so it's the, the celiac trunk, also known as descending aorta. Comes to the abdominal aorta when it gets to a certain, uh, excuse me, celiac trunk. I guess kind of branching off of the abdominal aorta, and it will feed to the liver, the stomach, the spleen. We have a superior mesenteric artery that one's going to feed the small intestine. Uh, your renal arteries taken to your kidneys. Gonadal arteries going to your testes and or, or ovaries. Inferior mesenteric is feeding the large intestine. Uh, your common iliac is breaking, branching off of the descending, going down towards uh, your legs, and you have an internal iliac. We follow this down, you'll have a femoral artery, popliteals coming behind the knee. You'll have an anterior and posterior tibial artery also. So these are some of the major or, uh, arteries um, in the human body. And likewise, we have to have major veins. Uh, so let's start up right at the head again. You're going to have an internal and external jugular. All right. Uh, just like for, again, for every vein or for every artery, there's probably a, there's a, a vein. So you have subclavian veins. You'll have an axillary vein, brachial vein, ulnar vein, radial vein. Uh, the one that most people donate blood through, your cubital vein. All right. Um, these are all in the upper portion. They will feed into the superior vena cava, which comes down into the heart. Uh, you'll have a hepatic and a splenic vein. All right. Uh, those are from the liver and the spleen going back to the, they'll go to the inferior vena cava here. You'll have renal vein from the kidneys. Superior mesenteric is coming from the small intestine. Inferior mesenteric coming from the large intestine. Uh, there's your inferior, inferior vena cava. It's the main trunk right through here, going up to the heart. You got an iliac, internal iliac, just before. You have a femoral vein, popliteal vein, posterior and anterior tibial vein. Again, if you have an artery, there's most likely a vein right with it with the same name. If few places that's not the same and that's most mainly up in the head right up here in the, the head and neck is where most of them you have a few different names for them this is just uh zooming in a little bit more to see them but you'll yeah, and they're giving you some more uh some smaller ones and i'm just looking at the large ones like the axillary <clears throat> uh, vertebral arteries feet going through your uh, vertebrae obviously uh subscapular is going to uh scapula on your back brachial, you feel it on the inside of your arm, uh, radial, ulnar, and these are all similar ones that we've already just mentioned. Uh, <clears throat> again, here, I look at the big ones, the celiac, the adrenal, kidney, abdominal aorta, uh, lumbar, uh, where are we at over here, gonadal, superior mesenteric, renal, let me move this out of the way. Uh, you have a phrenic nerve, uh, artery, excuse me, inferior mesenteric, common iliac, 
just familiarize with the major ones of what I'm concerned with. We could do the same thing again with the inferior vena, uh, vena cava and there's tributaries, hepatic, there's the vena cava itself, it's right suprarenal, gonadal, iliac, here's your common iliac, gonadal, we already mentioned them. Uh, we already mentioned, oh no, we didn't, the renal veins. All right. Um, for the uh, liver, because it is, uh, does have a lar rather large system with it, a lot of things going to it. Uh, so that's the hepatic portal system. You'll have gastric, splenic, or actually here's the splenic coming off of the spleen, sorry. Uh, inferior mesenterics with the small intestine, excuse me, large intestine, superior mesenterics with the uh, large intestine. And then you have your hepatic veins. These the hepatic, the gastric, so let me kind of mark this one a little, uh, the gastric and the splenic, these are all coming off of, off of your celiac trunk. Uh, if we back up a little ways, where is it at? No, not that one. Here, the celiac trunk, they branch off of it. Again, the veins of the, uh, of the upper um, limbs, here's your ulnar, radial, Here's your cubital vein, the one that everybody get, takes blood out of most of the time. You'll have a cephalic means it's coming from your head, brachial, uh, axillary, subclavian, brachial. Oh, well, that's stuck there. Brachial, cephalic is coming, it, it's where all these come, the jugulars. And let me move this a little so you can see it. The jugulars, internal and external jugulars, will meet. And the subclavian will all meet together and come into the brachiocephalic, which will go into the superior vena cava and go back to the heart. Well, it looks like that's all of them. Again, just familiarize yourself with the uh, major blood vessels of the body. Um, have a good day.